Uh, I'm Jamil Shoki from Orange, and today I will present to you our experience in Sonic in a telco use case and how we succeeded to deploy the switch in production. Uh, yeah, first, what about our uh, stack? We need to select a stack for the disaggregation. Then we started to see which stack we'll select. Do we need a proprietary open source or uh, network OS or open source network OS? Then the first decision is say, okay, let's go with a, an open source network OS, which is unique. And then in the switch, we say, okay, we'll continue also in an open switch. And our selection was for an edge core open switch. Uh, now, the why we selected the Sonic? Sonic, uh, after analysis we made, we considered that it's the most mature open source network OS, and thanks to Microsoft and the, all the community. The first, it's open. That's an open source code based on Linux OS. Second one is modular. As the architecture of Sonic, it's microservices, and each microservice is uh, on a container then it will permit certain flexibility, and mainly when we want to add a new feature, then it's easy to develop a new container. Uh, security and manageability. Uh, Sonic is secure. We have TechX uh, server. We have all the management solution like CLI, SNMP, RESTConf, telemetry, and logs. And finally, it's flexible as uh, with Sonic we can orchestrate or can automate, uh, uh, could be the update or any uh, microservice part using uh, Ansible, for example, or Kubernetes. Then this is the first part uh, concerning the Sony. Now the question that uh, are we able to use Sonic Network OS for a telco use case? And when we raised this question within my company at Orange, uh, the first answer was no. Some will say yes, and others say maybe. And uh, my strange question, question when, when I said to our telecom engineer, what do you think about Sonic? And the answer, Sonic, it's a Linux VM with a big nick. I say, OK, let's start with this Linux VM with a big nick. OK, uh, concerning the use case, we started our product journey by defining the use case. And as you know, in typical telco uh, network, we have uh, the, uh, the switch, the access switch, in front of our customer. We have a P router and P router, which is a backbone. I'll say, let's start with the most simple use case. It's the access switch. Then, uh, as we are telecom operator, we, we have to collect the, or interconnect our customer here at the enterprise with an access fiber optic access. One to ten gig. Then the use case we can say it's very simple because the switch is acting as a VLAN aggregation from this uh, different uh, fiber optic uh, axis, and usually it's used for what we call the FT uh, fiber to the office or fiber to the enterprise. Okay, now we know the use case. What about the feature? Then I have my, I've asked our engineer to give me the list of feature and they have received 120 features. I'll say, okay, let's check this feature uh, if Sonic will meet. First one is layer two. Uh, VLAN aggregation is how we can configure the ports, VLAN, the trunk, 802, uh, MTU. I think uh, the list was okay, no problem, we can use. Second one is management and monitoring. Uh, here in blue, we it's mean uh, the list of features that it's not 100% compliant with Sonic, with Sonic, then we say, okay, there is some CLI missing uh, functionality, but what uh, command and what are we can we are able to develop. SNMP also, we need some new ID. It's not a problem. Uh, NetConf, it's missing. This is the only feature we we find that is missing. But we say, okay, let's let's start with RESTConf, and we can. Uh, later developed the uh, NetConf. NTP, log, telemetry, GNMI, upgrade, and something it was uh, okay with Sonic. Security, uh, we have some specific need in TechX. 
mainly it attacks with multi-profile, uh, multi-user and multi-profile in, in order to manage a different level of uh, operation than it was missing and we, we, we have developed T TLS also. ACL, we, uh, we added some ACL rules. And concerning the hardness, disabling LLDP, LACP, then there was no problem. Then uh, in terms of hardware, we'll see after, then we need uh, sure uh, to be able to, uh, to manage, to, to, to control the temperature, the PCU, DC, the fan airflow, the SNFP, and the auto negotiation function. Then conclusion, yes, we can have a telco use case. The only missing uh, feature was a uh, netconf. But to say, okay, let's start and we'll see how we'll do it. Uh, next step was to select the, the hardware. And we discussed with the several uh, vendor in order to, to understand uh, the, the market. And at the end, we selected Edge Core as they are, they, they sure they have very good product and uh, a good price, but also they are able to deliver the switches in the, uh, in the uh, within the required required time. We started development uh, based on the switch. Uh, it's called GCS 201. And uh, two months after, we discovered that we are not able to continue because this switch cannot uh, have uh, the functionality of auto negotiation. And in our network, we have a lot of CP uh, in the uh, in our Eastern Price Count customer they have this auto-negotiation. Then it may uh, create a problem, operational problem. Then we say uh, we cannot continue with the switch. Fortunately, uh, Edgecore proposed an alternative to this uh, switch. It's based on another uh, uh, chipset. Uh, it's similar to the first one. And fortunately, we have the auto-negotiation uh, uh, functionality uh, between the switch and the CP. Uh, but uh, when we change the switch, we discover that uh, this switch it's not compatible with the open side of Edge Core, of uh, not Edge Core of uh, Broadcom. Uh, we ask Broadcom if it's possible to evolve, and we haven't received a feedback from them. Then we say, okay, let's use the side of Edge Core. And this was, you can say, first uh, issue we, we faced. We continue our de development, and uh, at the end. We succeeded to uh, to develop or to, to uh, check and develop the missing feature, the 120. And uh, we started the deployment in February. And the objective is to achieve around 80 switches in production by the end of this year. Uh, then this is the first phase. Uh, it was, it, we started in mid-2022. In and uh, we, we started the deployment uh, in Q1 2023. Then, uh, can say uh, six to nine, nine months to finalize the development and to start the, the, the production. Now, uh, what we learned, uh, first it's, uh, uh, Sonic it's relatively mature for data center. Uh, it's based on microservices uh, and containers, uh, flexible architecture, and can be used for layer two telco use case. For layer three, I don't know for the moment. Uh, the, also, we learned that uh, we are not really in a Linux or uh, Office or Microsoft uh, Windows plug and play. We can put the network OS on any switch and it can work. And there is a need to, uh, to install driver uh, to adapt the, the SI SFP. And the last one that uh, showed that Sonic is working on what's called open side the community. But this open side uh, can work only on some uh, product that decided by the chipset manufacturer. This could be a limitation. Uh, now, next step, I think we, it will be the P router. Uh, sure, there is a lot of uh, uh, protocols, and I'm waiting the new list of features to, to see. And can we use it for the P? No, yes, I don't know, and I hope Next year in the workshop, Sonic, I can give you the answer. All right. Any questions? I'll give you a mic then. If you guys are not comfortable coming there, I can try to pass on these mics. Yeah, Chris. It's, it's simple one. It's turned on already. 
Mic two. Yeah, that's all. Uh, how many route entries do you need for supporting telco? How many engineer? Uh, routing table size. How, how many entries? A routing routing table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I I heard five hundred k entries, but I want to validate that. No. Per rider for five hundred k, right? More really, but yeah. Oh, oh really more? Up to one point six million, kind of. 900 is what the table's at, and you usually... Uh, but for Sonic community, right, what, what kind of table size we are talking about? Uh, Do you have a number? Yeah, so what we, we haven't used for uh, layer 3, it's only layer 2. So. Uh, any other question? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. On the left side, yeah. Hey. Uh, what is the main reason the Orange chain from legacy to this uh, open source, open network? Yeah, it's reason a, or key drive? Yeah, mainly it's to control our uh, network equipment. Then having a, a control of uh, network OS, uh, we give us a flexibility to manage in a better way, our network uh, than the first region. And second, it's uh, from our TCO, we, we have a gain by using a, an open source network OS. Yes. Yeah, l l last week, there was a TIP summit, and uh, uh, there was a lot of presentation on disaggregation. And uh, we said that now we, we, are, uh, we are going in this disaggregation to be unlocked from the uh, network vendor, but maybe there is another lock at the chipset level. That is another story. Yeah. Hello? There we go. Uh, yeah, I had a question. You mentioned going from Trident 3 to Trident 2 Plus for the auto negotiation. Uh, the psi that you use for that Trident 2 is not considered the community one on GitHub. Do you find that there's any extra software engineering costs or, or difficulties in supporting something that's outside the community tree? Or do you rely on your vendor to do all of that support? Is, is the experience the same, whether it's OpenSAI or this not OpenSAI blob? Yeah, it's in the, the first one uh, in Trident 3. Uh, the open site was working very well, no problem. We haven't faced, uh, there was an agreement with EdgeCore that in case there is any problem at the site level, then they can support us mm. to change. But unfortunately here, the problem was from the chipset level, mm -hmm. then we are not able. For the, when we changed the, uh, the switch, my understanding is the open site's working, but uh, I don't know why Broadcom, they haven't tagged this, this switch. I got you. And, uh, but uh, officially, it's work, it should work. It's only blocking the, uh, uh, when we, a vendor of chipset will publish an open side, my understanding, he can tag which equipment can. And the three and two, it was not tagged, uh, three. Uh, gotcha. Uh, okay. No, the two, it's, it was it's, not tagged. But your experience with it is not, your end experience yeah. is not that different. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. And at the end, we, we, we are using now the, the side of H core. Before you decide to use the Sonic, did you also compare to, you know, there are also other the operating system to support the white box switch. So for the Orange team, did you also compare to the other the network operating system? And uh, what's the, besides the cost or besides the, because this is just a pure layer two switch, right? So why do you decide to use Sonic, not other the, white box the networking operating system? Yeah, it's a, uh, the alternative was proprietary network open network uh, OS. Uh, as we decided to use an open source, and when we compare the open source uh, network OS, our uh, and testing, our understanding that the, the best one was Sonic. 
I think the uh, the main uh, strong uh, point of Sonic is the SI, this ability to manage uh, the, uh, uh, the the chipset. It was really a, an advanced uh, feature in uh, in, uh, in Sonic. And for me, when we we made the analysis 2022, uh, in terms of open source, uh, the 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 best uh, open source was Sonic at request. My next question is, uh, because uh, this is just for the layer two. Yep. Next, uh, for your long-term plan, definitely you have to support the layer three, also yep. including the SRV6 something, right? Yep. So when you, comp when you think about the cost, uh, if you choose Sonic in the future, you also maybe have some team to develop. Is that uh, sure. your, your plan, right? Yes, uh, this layer two, we have a, a total team. Uh, developer, operations, security engineer, around 10, 10 people. Okay, thank you. With four, uh, no, f f yeah, five full-time uh, developer. Okay, sure, thanks. For feature testing, but also operations, security. Yeah, sure, it's a cost, but. Okay. Yep. Thank okay, you so thank much, you. Amel.